sounds up. All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect right here, right now with the legendary, we got Smooth the Hustler live on the line. How are you doing this evening? Uh, Mordo, I'm good, man. What's good? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. I got to say first and foremost, man, thank you for just giving us a little bit of your time this evening, man. I'm on, I, hey, uh, listen, I'm, I'm actually on my way back. Me and Trey, uh, my aunt, uh, she passed, so we we just left the funeral. Our well, funeral was earlier, but we had back home now. So uh, call me on the highway. All right, do you want, do you want me to give you a call back here in about an hour? Nah, nah, nah. It's so good. So I mean, we can we can let it ride as long as every once in the green moon you don't mind a lady in the background with directions. We good. <laughs> hey, that that is okay, man. That's just New York for you, right? You know what I mean? It's that's that New York vibe. That's I mean, actually, I'm I'm on the highway. We headed to Virginia. So um, but yeah, that's that's. I mean, you know, uh, we got to keep it moving. You know, I look. I didn't want to pass up our time, you know what I mean, uh, you, you know, so I'm here, I didn't want to put this off, you know, I want to shout to the fans, shout out to Canada, uh, Montreal, Toronto, Quebec, everybody, so now nah, we're here, we're here, and I got a treat, I got Trig with me, so you get double the pleasure. But I'm gonna dive right into this interview because I know I know you're on your way. You know what I mean. Today's been a crazy day for you, man. And I gotta say first and foremost, my sincere condolences just to you and your family. Appreciate yeah. it. But I gotta ask you there, this move. Like, what actually made you decide to get into the music industry initially, man? Like, what sparked the legendary career of Smooth the Hustler? Uh, um, you know, we start. The, you're gonna get the first, the first, first shut off. What? You know, I was at 12, 13, God bless the death man, and Jim. He met a guy by the name of Michael Ellis, who turned out to be the godfather of the reggae So you're going to get the first, you get, I think I never told this, like my beginning, beginning. So my actual beginning was 12, 13. And this guy, Michael Ellis, he had this, Artist called El Hanal, which was El General, and um, he was a big reggae tone artist. I mean, they wasn't calling it reggae tone. So, um, if anybody heard of General, uh, it was you know, it was like reggae in Spanish, but you know, it was the hooky party music. But long story short, you know, I was the rapper on a label, and I was would be calling with these guys. Um, but I was unknown. And then, um, you know, Michael Phillips got locked up. At General, he went to Panama. Um, so I was back to the street. Um, you know, he was selling drugs. And then, you know, who was in love with hip hop had always put, uh, you know, uh, around the house as we grew up. Uh, we fell in love with lovers and messages and everything else. And, um, yeah, I. You know, it, I was just, we just grew up in it. You know, it was something to try, something to, you know, people was looking at me weird and I would jump with a friend with the coat sometimes in the park. I would catch playing basketball. I was, I had a notebook and a pen uh, trying to perfect my craft. So, yeah, yeah, but I fell in love with it early, man. It was, it was hot and music around the house. And also, man, I read this well that in 1994 you actually joined the notorious B.I.G. on his Ready to Die promotional tour. I was wondering, man, what was that experience like just being on tour with Biggie? And of course, how did yourself and Notorious actually get get, get connected initially? Um, initially it was uh, I went with Foxy Brown. I mean, Foxy Brown was uh, what is step You know, I consider her. He was doing like some writing for Foxy Brown um, and uh, Dad oh, um, from Special Sonic. He had a studio in Clinton Hills, and uh, one day Foxy took me over there. And Junior, the whole Junior Mafia was in there, and uh, so I met them. We kind of kicked it, and then I ended up being big. Um, it's funny because he used to ride past my way. Uh, and, a, and another cat, oh, to go down towards Classic Class to visit Little Fame from MP with Little Fame cover, God bless him, Malik. Um, so uh, we was like middle point. So, you know, once in a blue, he may stop, uh, you know, highlight us. And, you know, we talk for a little while and then, you know, he'd keep it moving. But when we had the opportunity to do the, the tour, um, we had already. 
just the mutual love we had with each other and, and the line, um, you know, we was accepted with open arms. We got the chance to kind of promote our music as, was, you know, he was on the big label. We wasn't on the label, but I was a huge fan of um, which, you know, check our hats off to, you know, they ain't have to do that. And I gotta say as well, man, just being able to be on tour with Biggie, man, I'm telling you, that guy was such a lyrical MC, man. I mean, I heard rumors that that guy could just go on the, go in the studio and do a whole song just on a freestyle. Yeah, I'm, hey, look, you know, to be totally honest, quite a few of the cats that was kind of in our circle can do just that, you know. Um, he definitely uh, uh, was one of the best the greatest at it, um, but yeah, yeah, you know, you know, and, and doing hip hop, you know, everybody got their angle, right? But definitely, if you come from a place of uh, honesty and uh, a place of experience, and uh, you know, just a genuine place, regardless how ruthless it may be, if that's what you experience, it's easy to talk about, which therefore translates easier. When, when you when you record music, so if you're doing that type of music, the type of shit that you love and that you put the experience, live, it's easy to do. It's just like conversation. Uh, but you know, I'm not taking nothing away from the crap. I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying for the for weeks, uh, I, I'm sure I can speak uh, from that standpoint. You know, when you live in, when you're doing it, when you're loving it, and you know, it's easy to, to come from that place. Sitting and you know trying to create, create that storyline when you, you can just actually tell your day and 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 ask what it is. And also on March nineteenth, nineteen ninety six, you dropped my personal favorite record of yours, which I believe is your actual debut uh, studio album, man, titled "Once Upon a Time in America." I was I was always wondering what's the inspiration and story behind that phenomenal record because honestly, still to this day I could listen to that record front and back, beginning to end, and it never gets old, man. There's not one song that I skip on that particular record. Wow, wow, that's love. First of all, that's love right there. Much appreciated. Um, as as songs grew, I mean, because we was recording, we was recording and um. Uh, we 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 started saying, hey, like we got to get a song around, like everyday hustle and the everyday, you know, the name is smooth the hustler. We kind of cater to the hustling aspect. Um, and once we got maybe like eight songs in, um, and listening to them, like I would eat the power of a song, I would line it up with the rest of the song, and then just create my playlist prior to us finishing the album, just like, what's going to go first, what's going to go second, you know. So, uh, the beginning uh, of the intro was on one of the songs, and I was like, wow, well, what's this bump? And D.I. was like, hey, nah, I sampled it from, from uh, Once Upon a Time in America, this movie, and I was like, holy oh, shit, yeah, that's that movie, I like that. So, um, I felt, wow, you know what, um, that could kind of speak for my story as well. I mean, um, independent, we was independent, uh, a kid from Brooklyn, and our goal was to touch the world. So why not create the story once upon a time in America uh, to have the out, everything outside of America looking in, checking in, like, okay, what's this about? So um, that's, that's kind of where it, it came from. Uh, and then we just kind of, you, you know, uh, it gave it life, gave it life. Like, we didn't try to, like, fancy it up. You know, I got my mom's talking. I got, you know, my, my dudes. And, uh, you know, what was funny, he was doing the skits. You know, my dude was out there standing by the catch that I was hustling. So it was funny. But, but, nah, we just tried to capture the most, uh, you know, uh, our element, our element, and, and definitely once upon a time in America was a, was a cool way to attract everything outside of America, besides our 
that person besides the song. And I gotta say, man, the song Dollar Bill is still my favorite joint off that record today, man. I think I actually wore out two copies back in the day, just playing that joint over and over again. <laughs> Oh, man, that's love right there. That's, that's, um, you know, my boy DVL is Christ is on that song as well. Um, and that, I mean, that was the fun time making that record. And it was crazy. You know, it was ahead of its time. But, I mean, even for reflecting now, listening to it, um, you know, I mean, it, it kind of speaks for now what's going on. You know, digital transactions. say i don't want to make this interview all about this record but the one last thing i have man because when you brought up the digital transactions and whatnot i remember you talking about that throughout the record and i have to ask you like what, what made you actually have that idea back in the 90s because this was like 1996 back before the internet was even big like the internet was just starting you had to be rich pretty much just to have the internet like what actually made you put that implement those theories in, into your lyrics had the opportunity to appear in Jay-Z's Dead President's music video alongside uh, B.I. Notorious B.I.G. And I gotta ask you, man, what's this, how did that cameo appearance come to be for you? And of course, like, what was it like just uh, taking a part in that music video? A lot of 
more love and a lot more respect for everybody that was in the room. You know what I mean? We was there for Jay, but everybody, we celebrated each other. It definitely had that monopoly too. It was to show strength and unity in that. So I'm glad I was a part of that as well. Shout to A.D. He was a part of it. Um, a few other cats. My boy Keith, God bless him. Uh, Lil Pop from the barbershop. Hey, you know, you know, it was a lot of great guys at that table that night. And I gotta say, that music video and song will, will always be one of the most famous Jay Z songs, in my personal opinion, man. Like, that song was, that song, in my personal opinion, put Jay Z on the map. Oh, indeed, indeed. You know, hey, he, he was talking about, you know, it was, it was crazy because, um, you know, when we got the game, it was like, man, we talk that real. You know, whatever phony, phony things trying to do. And it was cool to see other cats, because like I said, you know, the team had this distress, and, you know, they'd be, they'd be pumped up, you know. So we, when he said, three, two, three, ah, yeah, it's pretty loaded, ah, you yeah. know. I was like, ah, right, man, we can talk to our shit. You know, they was riding around in, in three drops. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, definitely that record is definitely um, a huge tip for home. And, um, you know, look at him. He's been on to do great, great things. And also as well, jumping ahead into the 2000s, you actually had the opportunity to perform at the 2002 X Games, which actually had over 700,000 people in attendance. I was wondering, what was that experience like just performing at the X Games? And, of course, did you have the opportunity to meet any of the competitors? Oh, man, um... First off, it was a blast. Totally incredible. Um, actually, we would love to do that again. Uh, and, you know, shout out to Ice T. You know, Ice T is close, close to the uh probably over 20 years now. Uh, and uh, we did, we, we met a few people. I mean, I, I, I don't remember, like, names just right off the bat. But, um, basically. Was, was fucking incredible. You know, to have that many people rocking and bouncing and it was, was it, again, was, it's, what you, it's what you do it for. You know, you, you put the work in, in the studio and then you get out there and you go sell your work. Um, so the, to see the response, to see the responses, uh, you know, around the world actually is very humbling. Um, at the same time, um, it's, it's, you know, it's fuel for the flame. And I got to say as well, especially at the X Games, man, you have everybody all riled up, you know what I mean? They're all like punkers and stuff like that. So 700,000 crazy people, man, must have been one hell of a, one hell of an amazing performance. Ah, uh, the shit was insane. It was, it was insane. It was insane. Like I said, we love the you know, those type of uh, events. You know, I ain't know that. I mean, you know, it was crazy. I mean, not not the straight from this. Trig did one of the biggest ones. That was out in Paris under the Eiffel Tower with with uh, Michelle Jean. Uh, for for the uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, it was for the World Cup. That was insane. It was probably a million and some days, two point something. Okay, I'm being collected by Trig. It was like two point something. <laughs> But definitely had a bunch of screens going from the Eiffel Tower along down the strip on both sides of the street, along buildings. They had like monitors going from block and block and block and block. But definitely the X Games was incredible. But yeah, Trey trumped me on that one. I gotta say as well, you know, I heard over overseas in the UK, man, people go psychotic for hip-hop, man. So, like, I, I, I most definitely wouldn't doubt that number whatsoever, man. They were probably lined up for, like, just miles. Yeah, nah, nah. You know, it's, it's, overseas is a great, great experience. You know, I'm, they have their own hip-hop as well. And I, you know, I, I know they and they promote it. But definitely when, when you when, yeah, Canada especially, yeah, definitely. When, when New York rappers... Uh, come out, they embrace them, and that, that's love, especially if they appreciate the music and the art form. Um, yeah, it's a great thing. They appreciate it. I mean, even uh, in New York and, and out here in America, they appreciate it as well, right? But they got pockets where, you know, everybody want to be a rapper now. Everybody is a rapper, uh, you know, want to be a rapper. So, and, and, and saying that, you know, 
you may, people may be up there loving your shit, but they may, they may be sitting there critiquing your shit at the same time or trying to absorb, you know, what they need for their arsenal. So you may not get the, just the fan that's just totally in love with the music that just came there to just rock and just love this shit and sing along and experience the experience. You know, you may have people coming there who love this shit, but just coming there to absorb and to take notes and, you know, so you may not get that enthusiasm here as much as you would get it overseas. Uh, you know, fortunately, we haven't had that situation. Our music is that like that hard, relentless, you know, you got to bounce or do something to our shit. Um, so we, ain't, we, never, we never had that as of yet. And also as well, I read that you actually had the opportunity to team up with Rhymefest to write Dr. Dre to write some of Dr. Dre's unfinished album, The Detox. I have to ask you, what, what was it like being a ghostwriter, man, for Dr. Dre? And of course, what's your take on The Detox? Do you think Dre should drop that shit? Hey, well, immortal, man, you doing the homework? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That 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 shit was incredible as well. Um, you know, we were summoned to the studio. And um, DVM is Christ, man. Him, I work with him, and we walk in the round fest with him. And you know, I'm a fan. Come to find out, but he's a fan. Um, so we like shit, man. Let's, let's, you know, let's collaborate. Um, so instead of us trying to write separate stuff, you know, we wrote a bunch of stuff to Dre. We did maybe four records, um, but um. <laughs> None of them better. I, I don't know what happened, but they was so hot. They was hot to death. But, you know, I, I know he was actually he's looking for two last records. And we we knew Jay-Z submitted some stuff. Um, and, you know, and, we, uh, and it was proven, yeah, you know, his stuff made it. Um, so, yeah, you know, but it's all politics and, you know, it's no love lost, but it's just the, 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 the time was great. The time was great. The, the, the opportunity was incredible. We love Dre. I love Dr. Dre. If I could get a Dr. Dre, I could, oh, my God, it would be fucking amazing. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, just the opportunity to do that was incredible. And, and the writing and the, the, the so incredible artist that I'm uh, uh, um, with Jeff's and I, I gotta ask this, man, because obviously, like, Dr. Dre is gonna see the lyrics after you write it clearly. So, like, and uh, as, as we already know, you know what I mean? The fans of yours and myself, I already know that you are a phenomenal MC, man. So, you most definitely have bars for days. So, when Dre actually read your lyrics, like, w w what did he say? Did he go, like, oh, fuck? Like, like what was his expression when you read your <laughs> lyrics? Yeah, nah, you know what? You know, I mean, the unfortunate part was didn't get to see that. You know, we we, we we actually recorded the record and, you know, and we was out of there. You know, Dre, Dre wasn't even in the room. Um, and, I mean, he's Dr. Dre. He can do that. You know, he's Dr. Dre. He can do that. He paid, he, he paid his due. Uh, but I'm sure he's sitting on some hot, shit right now, because we, you know, we poured out, I mean, I never got a chance to, to write with, with artists, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm a solo artist, you know, even with my brother, we, we you know, we may have a beat wearing, and, you know, I may be off the, from my corner banging my stuff, and he may be on, on in his corner banging his stuff, and then we may come together and say, hey, look, this is what I got, and he may go, hey, this is what I got. But then we back in our separate worlds until it's time to mess the two. And then we figure out the science, the, 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 the method child madness or, 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 at that point. But actually writing, you, you know, with those guys, it was, it was, really, it was really cool. But Dre got, Dre got some hate. And also I read as well around the same time, you actually created your own record label titled titled SMG Records. I was wondering, what made you decide to start your own record label in the early 2000s? And of course, is it still around today? Yeah. Um, one, we, we was we was definitely shouting. 
So jumping ahead to uh, to, uh, to to like you know this day and age, in between 2015 and 16, man, you actually released Violent Times, uh, day one and two. I was wondering, what's the inspiration behind that series, and will we actually see a third in the near future? You know, the the, the first one was my I, I celebrate my birthday on that. Uh, my birthday is February 8th. So I was saying, you know, I had a few records. You know what? I can, if I can knock out maybe a few more records, uh, I can put a project together and see my core friends there. Um, after the after the passing of my son, moms, I have recorded a few records here and there, and I just wanted wanted the fans to know where I was mentally, um, as well as uh, uh, skillfully where I was. Um, so I put that project together. And it actually was a great uh, piece of work. Um, so good that I said, you know, but the following year, I ended up doing a, a part two. Uh, but then again, you know, life happens. Uh, I ended up adopting my granddaughter. Uh, and, you know, back to being a family man for a little bit now. But again, uh, as I said before, Recording records. We have uh, my brother and myself have a ton of records to the side. We got a Smith Brother album. We got a Smooth the Hustler half done album. We got a Full Trigger album. Um, yeah, actually two. And you know, but we we still commenting everything. Uh, but 
hopefully the Valentine's Day three will circle uh, on Valentine's Day, but that'll be next year uh, in February. Uh, but definitely, we have a single uh, uh, that we look to now. Uh, I, I'll make sure you'll be definitely the first immortal to get it uh, along with the video. And, um, you know, it's that real smooth hustler trick gambler crap. Hey man, I gotta say, if you if you if you send it, we most definitely will spin it. I'll tell you that for a fact. Absolutely, and hey, you're gonna love it too. I mean, you know, you ain't gonna know which one to play after you hear this music. Whether it's this one, well, you know what, you're gonna want to play both. You're gonna say, "Check the growth from Broken Language," one of the most craziest album, craziest records ever stood on wax. Um, compared to this new 2021. And also, Smooth, this is the time right right quick before I actually wrap things up that I just give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shout outs to whomever they want to give shout outs to. But most of all, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated. Everything Smooth the Hustler if they're not already doing so. I I first I want to shout shout out Outlaw Radio. Uh, I want to shout you out, D. Bottle. You know, um, the the whole Canada, the whole Canada, and 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 whoever's in the ear reach uh, of my voice. Uh, you, Smoother Hustler, the Triple Fan, much love to you. We appreciate you. Sorry we were one from day one. Sorry we lost the beta. Um, but we bring back that real thrill. say smooth thank you so much again man for just taking a little bit of your time this evening and coming on 97.7 outlaw radio fm i've been a fan of yours since i was young man so thank you for years of amazing music and i'm looking forward to many more years to come as well thank you Amaru. i appreciate your time i appreciate your, your whole fan base of listeners and um you know, we got we, we got projects dropping so you guys are here First single from Super Trade, hopefully in two months. It may be before that, because I may send you the state of draft. But definitely be on the lookout for Smooth and Trade. You can all the updates on my IG at Smooth the Hustler or Trigger the Gambler on IG. Most definitely. I got to say, it sounds like they're, they're, they're going to be released right in time just before summer. So it's most definitely going to be our summer jam at, over here at Outlaw Radio. Absolutely. And you know what? As a bonus, a model, we're going to send you the never before perfected a trigger to gambling DMX golf lesson. Um, it's called. Uh, oh, damn. We was, we was just banging it here, you know, on the drive. Like, damn, this record, we're going to put this record out. But, um, yeah, yeah, we'll give you some exclusive. So you, at least you'll have the exclusive. It ain't going to be for sale, but you can always give your listeners that real trip. Hey, I got to say, I greatly appreciate that, Smooth. I really do, man. Thank you so much in advance for that. Absolutely, man. Hey, it was a pleasure. But, and, again, shouts to you, Immortal. I, I touch up with you on the ground. Hey, man, most definitely smooth. You have a safe drive, safe drive home, and most definitely. Thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful night. All right, you're welcome. It's the Hustle. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn Browns. Bit of you have to find it right here.
Yeah, yeah, you already know what to do. Have yourself a wonderful night, guys. All right.